romantic getaways with unhappy endings has passed, as the need of our personal pest extermination services has moved from the sweeping, beautiful venues of France and Italy and into the heart of civil unrest in Marrakesh, Morocco. Morocco isn't usually such a boiling pot of Latin Middle Eastern violence and political anarchy. In fact, I usually find Morocco to be a relatively calm boiling pot of dysentery and flea market items that smell like goat urine. But it's amazing what a little good old-fashioned capitalism and martial law will do to change that. Meet Klaus Strandberg, the primary reason for said civil unrest and also our target number one. In addition to being yet another creepy old white guy with white hair and a fancy suit, Klaus is by far the most heinous, evil, and truly despicable vermin we have ever faced! He's a banker. Bank CEO, in fact. A bank that seems to have such an unfair interest rate that it seems our very own Swedish Ray Kroc here is taking just a few billion or two from the Moroccan people. An act that actually got him tried and found guilty in a court of law and sentenced to life imprisonment. Wow, oh, wow, the justice system actually worked this time. Wow, good for them. I guess my job is done. Oh, no wait, it didn't. He escaped the armored truck convoy that was sending him to the Moroccan equivalent of Sing Sing, and now he's sitting pretty inside the Swedish consulate, drinking coffee, taking TV interviews, and getting back massages. Klaus is sitting inside what is essentially a modern fortress filled to the brim with armed security personnel who are already on high alert from the riot going on just outside. Not only that, but the only entrance to the consulate outside the front door is a basement crawling with heavily armed mercenaries that busted him out of the convoy to begin with. Mercenaries that belong to this man, General Reza Zaydan. Apparently, the general was a boy that was raised by a wealthy family to be a man of action. A man of action that never really came. Feeling as though his golden years are being wasted away on bureaucracy, combined with a never-fading chip on his shoulder that makes him feel the need to prove himself, Zaydan appears to have orchestrated Klaus's escape on purpose, full well knowing it incite riots and infuriate the public, giving him cause to enact martial law and stage a full-on military coup of the Moroccan government. Okay, I gotta admit, that's quite a clever plot. Unfortunately for him, I found out about it first. I do have some friends that would not be too happy to lose their government contracts over some silly banking nonsense like this. The general has held himself and his men up in an old abandoned school just on the other side of town. A location that, though it seems to be the staging point for a military invasion of Morocco's political climate, is ironically easier to infiltrate than the Swedish consulate. Makes me wonder if Zidane's coup would be unsuccessful even without my involvement. I guess we'll never know. You will need L O D S of E M O N E. What's a spell? Loads of money. That's pretty much it. All right. Get past a riot, kill a CEO in a protected embassy, murder a military general, stop a military coup, and get back here before happy hour ends. Mission start! Before we do anything, Daddy needs a drink, and a drink Daddy shall receive to the bar! Run out of the bazaar here, exiting on your left, and then take your first right and step into this little hookah lounge here. Unfortunately, a big bad man is standing between us and our pre-mission cocktail. So duck down behind some chairs and toss a coin over yonder to the left side of the VIP entrance. Wait for the big old Mr. Bouncer here to go pick up that shiny nickel, and while his back is turned, go ahead and sneak into the bar. Now believe it or not, the $3 mojito special isn't actually why we're here. We're actually here for this man. Yes, I know he doesn't look like much, but he's actually our key to getting target number one. Our khaki-panted friend here is actually the irresponsibly late cameraman to a local TV crew fortunate enough to have landed a personal interview with our target, so taking his place is chief amongst our priorities. But first, we must lay a trap, and every good trap has good bait. Remember, we're in the desert, and in the desert, water is a rare commodity. So once we've gotten inside the bar, head over to this little bathroom here and turn on the sink. First, we need to be sure our trap works, so let drunken soldier boy here be our guinea pig. Eventually, he'll get up from his table, and the lure of clean running water will be too much for him. Once he heads in to turn off the faucet, sneak in behind him, shut the door, give him a little nappy poo, toss him in the chest, hide the gun, and turn the faucet back on. Now that we know our trap works, we just have to wait for the right man to arrive. Soon. Wait 
a few minutes for our camera guy to take a few hits off his hookah and get off the phone with his ex, and he'll eventually succumb to the same watery temptation as the military man before him. Execute the second verse the same as the first, only this time take his ugly khaki pants and then stash him. Keep in mind that the consulate both has metal detectors and security guards performing routine frisk searches, so if you came packing, you might want to leave your handy dandy pistol here with the booze. Once the guns, the guard, and the journalist is dropped, don our new tacky khaki outfit and head out of the bar, past the lounge and right into the marketplace. Beyond this sea of hard-selling merchants and tourists with nothing better to do is our TV crew. Make your way past the crowd and make contact. Ah, you must be the news crew. You guys are with TMZ, right? Who are you? Uh, uh, uh Frank West, professional ace reporter. And camera guy. Where's Finley? You know how they tell you to never eat the worm? Yeah. He ate the worm. Whoop, well, sounds good enough to me. Let's go interview a madman. All right! Once the TV crew has fallen for our little fake news plot, follow them through the angry mob, past the checkpoint, the metal detectors, and wait for Mr. Field Director to give us a prep talk about breaking the, quote, story of the century, end quote, and follow them on inside. Who needs to sneak in when you can just walk through the front door? Wait for our journalist friends to sign up at the desk and be escorted to our very first target. Kingsley, I watch your show all the time. It's my pleasure to meet you. The pleasure is mine. And you must be... Tyler Clark, field producer. Nice to meet you. And this is... Uh... That's Frank. He's our cameraman. He's new. Right. Well, let's get on with the interview, shall we? All right, everyone. Pam, take a seat over there with Klaus. Frank, set up the camera and do something about these lights. Okay. Well, you heard the man. Walk on over and turn on the camera. Then head on over to the door here and immediately head left and up the fancy modern stairs. Don't be alarmed, but a security guard will frisk you on your way up. Hey! Hands off the merchandise! Once the frisk is over, head over here to this little booth and turn on some stage lights. You know, it's a lot brighter, but the set still seems kind of dead and sterile. We could really use some foliage or something from nature to liven up the scene a little. Hmm. That could work. Perfect. Agent Moose has eliminated target number one. But before we can get out of here, it's best to destroy the video evidence of his brave sacrifice. Head on down and back the direction we came from, but this time head all the way back into this door here. Wait a moment or two for Security Joe over here to check on those totally not Bitcoin mining servers in the corner, then sneak in and fry his external hard drive. Aha! No pirated copies of 21 Jump Street for you! Once the deed is done, head on to the right and loop around the ground floor and out the front door we came in. Move outside the consulate grounds and back through the market, past the bar and all the way back to the alley we originally came out from and go to the back. Make a right and then you'll see a small little rug store. Slip through the beads and sneak on up the stairs to find a rather fashionably dressed man wearing a fancy hat. This guy is actually the former professor to the old school General Zaydan is now holed up in. Right now, he's just in our way, but he does have a helpful little key to the school grounds next to his trusty hookah. So once you get the chance, toss him some change, admire the pottery, tuck in our fine educator friend in the wicker basket, take his key, and then head on over to this ledge. Make like a ninja and climb over to this pipe, following it down to the school grounds. Sneak past Moroccan boot camp and around this van over here to this door, which we can now painlessly unlock with our nifty school key. As soon as the opportunity presents itself, give the guard here a nap, take his clothes, and move forward. You could, of course, take the extra time to wait around a few minutes by taking him to the next door past this one and sneaking him into a basket when no one's looking. But personally, I think the private is looking pretty pale, and he could do for a nice tan in the sun with a short dirt nap. No one ever seems to find him here, so leaving him here should just be fine for now. After unlocking another door moving forward a ways, you'll spot a perfectly climbable window. Climb on inside and move into the next room and we'll be exactly where we want to be to kill target number two. 
Fortunately, the general is far easier to get to than our previous target, so we won't be needing the assistance of Agent Moose. However, if there's anything I know about the military, it's that everyone always hates their superior officer. So with the help of a few friends and the push of a button, we'll be able to take out the general in no time. I tell ya, I don't care what anyone says. That Zayden is not all he's cracked up to be. He likes to pretend that he's solid or something, but he's just a guy with a shiny uniform and an ego to match. You got that right. Seriously, though, do you believe for a second that Zayden is a mastermind in this coup by himself? Come on. He doesn't have the smarts. He can strike the fear of God into men and charm the knickers off most women. But you and I both know Reza Zayden is no mastermind. You're not wrong, that's for sure. Thing is, it's not like Zayden is even the lead from the front kind of guy, you know? I mean, uh, he graduated from West Point, la di da da Flying colors and all. But has he seen actual combat? Not unless you count enhanced interrogation. Blow hard with a pair of pliers. That's all he really is. Oh, you're preaching to the choir. No, but really. I mean, this whole man's man attitude. Deep, booming voice. Chest hair, right? Come on. Everyone knows Zayden is just an upper class fop. His dad was Secretary of State, and his family's practically royal. The only way this guy was not going to become general was if he took a dump on the flag. Oh, you're preaching to the choir, man. I mean, sure, Zayden does date some beautiful women, I'll give him that. And they sure seem to flock around him with his chiseled Omar Sharif jaw. Do you see that model he's dating? But they're really not into him, you know? It's the uniform. Chicks like medals, even if you bought them rather than earned them. Huh. Uh, what? The, uh, intercom? It's, uh... A bunch of nasty shit. Hey, I didn't say anything. You agree. You agree. If anybody's listening, that's just as bad. Okay, just shush, shush, just shush, shush. Are you completely out of your minds? You think you can just disrespect your superiors without consequences? Shame on you. I should have you both caught, Marshal. Now get back to your posts, sir. I. <laughs> Well, that's one way to flush him out. Target number two is eliminated. Go ahead and head back out the window we came in amidst the commotion downstairs, then head over to your nearest exit point. I guess years of Monopoly has taught me well. Never trust the banker. <laughs> Mission accomplished! Wait a minute! Who stole my wallet?! <laughs>